welcome everyone. Um, my guest today is Deborah Atkinson. She's a friend of mine and a fitness expert, especially fitness over 50. And we're also going to be talking, I invited her on today in particular because I'm writing a book about mold and I talk about exercise in there uh, because it's so important and the way you choose to exercise when you're ill, um, when you're going through detox, needs to be kind of considered. So Deborah's going to touch on some of that. She has been through mold herself, so she has some unfortunate personal experience yeah. <laughs> on this topic. Research, yeah. <laughs> She's also kind of an expert on, yeah, again, midlife um, weight loss and weight management and, you know, the right kind of exercise. So it's going to be a lot of fun. A little bit more about her. Hormone balancing fitness expert Deborah Atkinson has helped more than 200,000 women flip their second half with energy and vitality. She's the best-selling author of You Still Got It Girl, The After 50 Fitness Formula for Women, and Hot and Not Bothered. Deborah hosts 50, Flipping 50 TV, an internet broadcast, and Flipping 50 Podcast, an AARP top podcast for adults 50 plus with over 1 million downloads. Wow. Her TEDx talk is everything women in menopause learned about exercise may be a lie. And we have the link to that in the notes uh, under your, under wherever you're listening right now. So if you're on Facebook, it's on there. On YouTube, it will be on there. And I put it in the chat for our live Zoom audience here. She's, she's the creator of the first and only hormone balancing fitness membership exclusively for women in menopause and the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist training for her personal trainers. Great. Well, welcome, Deborah. Well, hi. Thanks so much for having me. Hey. Well, we've had you on before, and I kind of know yeah. some of your... Um, some of your, uh, you know, philosophies and all that. You've been in the fitness industry a long time, and then you went out on your own. And I think around then you were also kind of hitting midlife, is my understanding. I wondered before we get into kind of detox and uh, that topic, I just could you just tell us more of your personal story and how you had to relearn how to exercise, so to speak? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I tell this story because I was a lucky one. I really was very lucky. I accidentally stumbled on really what was the answer and what became the after 50 fitness formula for women. So I, at 49, I quit my job and I said, okay, goodbye, safety, security, regular paychecks. And, and then I turned around and I looked at in eight months, I'm going to start paying college tuition. What the did I just do? I mean, I literally panicked and so I went from somebody who had been, you know, people who go into fitness, we really truly are that stereotypical. We love it and we yeah. teach it all day. And then we go do our own. And that was me. And I had exercised really for hours a day. And that's not too much of an exaggeration. But when I quit my job, it was because I wanted to have a bigger reach. I really did. And it was timing because my son was going to go off to college. And I knew, you know, he was my only son, really. And I knew he was going to get a life. And I thought I better get one, you know, outside of him, because they frown on you bringing your parents to college, you know, and I didn't <laughs> no, think it would be crazy I'm already about that. The same. I'm like, wherever you go, I'll go. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I was right. like, I was going to apply at the university. And I thought, oh, my God, look at me. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I and I really had great intentions and we'd gone through, you know, the recession back in 2008 and we had some really great results. And I knew we could help a lot of people do similarly, meaning the fitness industry. But I also knew that I had to keep working with customers myself or I would be irrelevant really quickly. So long story short, when I left, I had no intention of doing that. It, I stumbled on it because 12 months after I left, I, you know, I was spending a lot of money to figure out how do I build an online business? Because I had no idea. None. I, mm. And it's a lot easier today because now, thanks to the pandemic, everybody's had to. And, yeah. um, you know, and there are more courses and there are more people there to help you do it. But I was really stumbling in the dark by myself. I spent a lot of money, much more going out than was coming in that year. And by November, I had to put my house up for sale. But all wow. of that said, I was so panicked. I was 
letting myself get away from the computer and really focusing on building this or learning or, or doing some work for about 20 minutes a day. And part of that was because I had a dog and I absolutely had to, you know, take him for a walk. And I realized about a year later, I'm, I'm editing videos. I'm looking at pictures of myself from past and present and now. And I'm thinking, I look better. I look stronger. I look healthier. And I kept getting compliments. And I was like, this is so backwards, you know, from everything I was ever taught and everything I taught at a university for 15 years. So I started digging into, is this just a study of one? Is this just something that happened to me? Or is this, there's more to it. <clears throat> and I found that there's so little research that features female subjects in exercise science Aww. and sports medicine. But then when I started digging into, there's menopause and there's prenatal and postnatal and there's adolescent girls and seven major hormone changes we go through really every single one of them demands a different exercise protocol you know and then you throw in something like mold and toxicity and then you've got you know a layer on top of that and so any any hormone phase that a woman is in there's really a fraction of the research out there caters to us. So if you don't know to ask your trainer or test the video that you bought off of YouTube or, or got off of YouTube and said, is that made for me? Was that made based on uh, exercise and research featuring me, women just like me? The answer is probably no. So for mm -hmm. those of you who've started exercise and failed it or felt like, it just made you tired. It's not your fault, really, because we we deserve something for the hormone phase of life that we're in right now. So really, that's how Flipping 50 was born. It's about 100% of what we do is based on the research of women in midlife only. So we know it works based on those protocols. And since then, we've had eight years of testing it on our community to oh, know nice. what works. Yeah. So to recap on your story, you say you're so busy working that you were only working out like 20 minutes a day. Yep. Your physique was getting better. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah, exactly. you were kind of lucky because you could have just, I think what a lot of women yeah. do is, you know, oh, I'm getting some weight, my metabolism is changing. I'm More. gonna work out harder. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. And just to just to show you that <laughs> um, I'm not all that intelligent is what I might just be showing you right now but <laughs> to prove that I somehow could be immune as a woman in midlife because I know better than I would be fine doing endurance exercise. I trained for an Ironman triathlon in 2019 and I gained over 10 cortisol pounds during that training. And trust me, nobody tries to do that training for a, a triathlon. You want to be light right? to move through space and all that time. <laughs> and, and it was just a perfect storm, you know, exposure to mold, menopause, too much endurance exercise causes a great deal of stress. And all of that was just, I mean, it was very hard to bust through actually, and to remove once it was there. Yeah. I have a friend who to the you know like one of those what is it like weight training competitions and yeah man it messed up her hormones and stuff for a couple of years afterwards uh, but he said something interesting he said cortisol pounds and some people may yeah. be thinking well how does she know it was cortisol pounds versus <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah tell us more about that well you know based on I mean you know inflammation and I tested so you know, this is what I do for other people. And, you know, had I had I had a client trying to do what I would have done, I would have said, what are you doing? But of course, you don't do that when it's yourself, you don't see it. And so immediately, a month after I got back, I had barely done anything. I mean, I was walking in, in recovery, but I hadn't really exercised. And honestly, we're, we're 18 months away from that last Ironman. I haven't run since really, I've really, wow. really cut back. Yeah. Um, so but I tested your cortisol and Absolutely. other inflammatory mm -hmm. markers too, mm -hmm. like yeah. CRP yeah. or what did you test? CRP, A1C, homocysteine. Okay. Yep. Cool. All of them. Okay. And you guys offer that or tell people how to do that on their own? Yeah. So I offer a direct lab 
um, if if somebody doesn't have great insurance or just wants to do it and they can't get a doc to do it. But so many of those, like the saliva cortisol, you know, definitely I'll do periodically because I know I need to. I can't trust myself. <laughs> so <laughs> behave. <laughs> right, I know. Right. It's either it's either coffee or it's exercise. It's one of the two. I, I've got to stay in bounds. <laughs> so tell us more about how you know the cascade from maybe just in, my audience is pretty knowledgeable, but maybe just explain a little bit what, what is cortisol? Why would it go up? Mm. What are the kind of steps that make you yep. gain weight from it? Yeah, well, any kind of stressor, any kind of stressor is basically your body feeling like it's under attack. And, you know, we all associate, I think, emotional stress with cortisol, like that makes your cortisol go up, but all kinds of stress do. So if you're not sleeping very well, that will disrupt your cortisol significantly. And it takes a day. If you didn't sleep really well last night, your cortisol today is not par. It's not great. Um, so there is that emotional piece. I had them all. So if you think about my year, I had a, a septic tank back up just before Christmas that year. And um, so flooded the basement, the lower level of the house I was renting. So that was mold. And I knew that wasn't good. So I was surrounded all the time by functional people like you, you know, and I knew, oh, I'm in trouble here because you know, if there's water in the basement, there's probably going to be mold here very soon. Well, it ended up taking um, close to four months for them to mitigate it. Uh -huh. You know, all the while I'm living upstairs and it really wasn't shut off from the rest of the house. So uh -huh. um, clearly I was exposed. And so I had the emotion of that and the stress of them jackhammering out the drywall and the floors, that was not fun. Um, so there was all kinds of stress and then battling landlord, you know, so this emotional piece that went with it, the physical exposure to, you know, the mold and toxicity when your body is fighting something that's not supposed to be there. You know, it's like getting the flu or being sick. And then I was actually repeatedly coming down with something over a course of eight weeks. And amongst all of this, I was then looking for a house, looking for a place to live and move really quickly. Once I realized it was, I tested the house, there's still mold in the environment. Mm -hmm. And the landlord was like, no, I've done enough. We spent enough money. We're not going to do anything else. I was like, well, I'm going to have to go, <laughs> you know, and yeah. I, at that point I didn't have a place to go. So I started looking and, um, you know, ended up moving pretty quickly and it probably made a really rash decision. I mean, I love Scottsdale, but it, I mean, it was like, might as well close my eyes and just put my finger on. That was how random it was literally. <laughs> um, so then I'm training for this Ironman. So physically, well, before we talk about your arm, man, you yeah. so much interesting stuff in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. One, one thing to say is beyond the stress of the mold is the stress of everything related to mm -hmm. having mold. So I feel mm -hmm. like there's this growing awareness of mold, which is fantastic. But yeah, getting contractors out, dealing with your mm -hmm. landlord, dealing with kind of misunderstanding about the severity of it. And, and something you said struck me about getting sick off and I was the same way. And I think a lot of people won't, don't realize that's a common symptom. Uh, it really is a common symptom. And then the cortisol that you talked about a little bit, uh, in, I'm kind of generalizing here, but pretty much any hormone can go high or low in mold. Mm -hmm. um, so cortisol can go high, cortisol can go low. Uh, so just the mold itself is taking you on a ride and you can yep. get anxious and you can be tired. Um, yeah. And then on top of it, you're dealing with all this stress. Sometimes you end up, I was like definitely overeating carbs when I was at my sickest because I just needed energy. Mm. So I would just, you know, drink tea and eat chips or whatever. I was just like <laughs> so tired, you know, so sometimes you also aren't making the best decisions, which maybe is a segue to the next part of the story where you decided to do an Ironman. <laughs> well, um, just in my, 
defense, okay? <laughs> in my <laughs> defense. <laughs> I, I was already committed. So the December before I had said, this is going to be my fittest year. I'm going to blog about it. It's going to be great. <laughs> and so I felt like I was in, but most of all, I was on the hook because I'd already paid my registration fee, right? So, oh, okay. It was a big yeah. Deal. And, yeah. And for me, it was because I do love it. I love the training. I love the, um, it, the time, like it's me time for me, literally. I mean, I write articles and while my, I'm riding my bike or whatever. So it was something I wanted to do, you know, and I more, more that year potentially, cause I wanted to feel good. It was like, I'll just turn the corner and then I'll start feeling good. And then I'll, I'll, I'll whip this, right? Like I'll beat it. And that's not quite the way it worked. So I kept doing it, kept staying in. And, you know, by September, you know, I was well aware that this is not, you know, the same training cycle that I'd gone through in the past. I'm not responding the same, you know, at all. This is, this, this is not the way my body responds to training. So I knew something was really wrong, but I was so in, you know, invested in doing it that I was going to see it through. So that was a little stubborn headedness. Probably had I talked to you, you should have slapped me twice and said, well, what, what are you doing? <laughs> well, you might have been a little trick, so to speak, because you, yeah. you were in the mold, it sounds like about four months. Um, yeah. Is that right? So, well, no, not? I was actually, so I didn't move until June 17th. So from December, Okay. 30th until okay. then it was okay. still yeah okay yeah I think well it still may be true that you might have thought okay I've moved you know I've moved on with my life um I'm done with that phase right I mean when I moved to Arizona it was similar I was like sweet I'm gonna just magically get better but it takes time for the body to recover so okay so you you pressed on with it when was the Ironman when did it happen so it was in November and okay. and additional stressors so um you know my business was I was at this growth stage and in order to have the growth I needed a huge loan and so I was like hinging on the edge of this loan I needed it needed it needed it and it was in a really bad place with credit cards because I needed this loan to come through and got offered a TEDx talk. So hence the talk we're, we're speaking about, but um, I had three weeks to prepare. And when TED calls, you don't say no. So I was like, yeah, I'll do that. That you was know. during this training time. That was during like the last five weeks, yes, okay. of training. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I have this and I have that and I have this. So it was all just coming to a head at once. So I gave the TEDx talk and was waiting to hear about the loan. Then I flew off to Cozumel to go and do this. You know, not only did I do one, but I had to go to another country to do one, right? And um, I think I was switching planes literally when my loan came through. I think I was in Houston and I transferred the money into my account and I paid off that credit card account and I boarded the plane. I mean, it was like, right. okay, done. <laughs> so it was a very stressful time. I mean, a lot of good things and then a lot of like, so my cortisol was up and down Oh, and, and I, I could feel it. There's a thing when you're, when you're a runner and you're used to training that you, you may monitor your heart rate, you know, and know what heart rate zone you're supposed to be in. But once you've done that, you kind of know when you've thrown it into high gear, like you just know how that feels. And I'm to the point where I know now, I know exactly what it feels like when my cortisol is high. Wow. I can feel it go. And does it, I, how long does it stay up when you get in that state? It's like I learned really quickly to take some deep breaths. I mean, it doesn't feel like that for a long time because I can kind of de-escalate and pull myself back. But I know when then I tip the scale. It's either, you know, I'm not drawing good boundaries and getting away from work or I'm, oh, yeah. you know, having that one more cup of coffee that won't do any harm, really, right? Um, yeah, so I know. You're pretty I'm getting to coffee, huh? 
you know, I metabolize it really well. So I justify that to have another one. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. so funny with caffeine. Like I, it can make me really anxious at times. Like I had like maybe one ounce of coffee this morning and I was like, done, I can't do this. Like I'm just in a phase where I can't have it sometimes, but I so you're really sensitive too. I'm super sensitive to it. Yeah. yeah. So, but yes, yeah, so I've just kind of learned to sort of listen to my body in different phases. And if it's like, caffeine is making us crazy right now. then I, I try to listen to that. <laughs> okay. So this, yeah, this is all really interesting. How would you, so how'd you do in your Ironman? How'd you feel afterwards? You know, I actually did fairly well in my Ironman and I felt okay afterward the day after, but a couple days more and I was probably pretty wiped. You know, I, um, it wasn't the same, you know, it wasn't a good kind of a high that an athlete experiences and then you mm. recover and you feel rested and good because you're going into rest recovery mode in your season. It was just kind of meh. <laughs> no, I mean, really, there wasn't um, a peak that I was really in great fitness. I wouldn't say it was just, I pushed through. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And so after that, what was, did you decide to scale back How, or did you start detoxing what, or were you detoxing from mold already? What were you doing for yourself? Yeah. You know, I was doing that all the way through. So I've got a sauna and, you know, like yours and, and I love that use it regularly. So that's yeah. always been a part, a bigger part during, I find it really hard. I don't know about you to get into that thing during summer here, but uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, so I definitely use it almost daily in the winter when it's cooler. So definitely that was a big part that I really scaled way, way, way back. Um, and like I said, I haven't run. I think my body is just kind of telling me, you know, I don't know if you need to run anymore. Just, you know, and I'll start it. It just doesn't feel good. There is never right. that reaching that comfortable zone anymore. So, um, but now I'm just really moving, you know, and consciously thinking about, you know, I know what I need to do. I need to hold on to lean muscle and I need to, you know, hold on to and or build bone density and hold on to those things to age really well. But mostly I just need to think really clearly, have great energy and, you know, don't need to necessarily go to great extremes to do that. Okay. I like how you said, like, these, these are my goals, you know, think clearly, mm -hmm. you know, this mm -hmm. and that, and then the, mm -hmm. you know, way more about exercise than we do, obviously. So I wonder if you could share, like, as you're putting together that in your head, you said you're running, your body isn't wanting to do what, what are some examples of things you do during the week that support that? You know, the pandemic for me has been really good for a lot of reasons. And I, when I first did self-initiated exercise is what I call it, you know, it's like high school is over and, you know, there's no sports, there's no coach saying you have to do this or that. And I started walking um, the summer after high school with my mom. That's how I originally got into fitness in the long term. And I haven't been walking, you know, really for a long, long time. And so during the pandemic, I started walking. It was just a way to be out, you know, of the, what felt like claustrophobia, right? Constantly right. inside the house, not going anywhere else. Seeing people from across the street was actually nice. Um, and I just started walking a lot and that was a very helpful. So I've kept that up. I don't probably walk as much as I did in April of 2020, but definitely walking a lot more regularly, just taking off, going for walks with nothing like not music just my own thoughts in my head that's been really helpful to decrease stress and actually I, I think it's helping as much as anything with fitness um, I think mm. it's a big big way to turn a corner you know is moving more not necessarily am I trying to get my heart rate up or go a certain distance or get breathless it's not really about that it's just more movement so that's a big staple and then I'll lift weights twice a week, definitely, um, you know, religiously just to maintain lean muscle. Total body uh, doesn't take very long, but it's got to be there. And, um, and then beyond that, I'll do high intensity interval training a couple times a week. 
and you know, it doesn't matter how I do it. So sometimes I can do it with my audience. I can do it with my community here, or I can use a stairmaster or a treadmill, a bike. Um, so I vary it. Okay. So you're doing walking, some kind of floor exercises with weights, and then some kind of cardio. Not, was it kind of interval cardio? Yep, high intensity interval. So, so I go high and I go low, but I stay out of the middle range, which is actually where more stress accumulates. Mm, so, like, jog is that kind of jogging is in the middle range? Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, you know, I've shared this as we've talked before, but I've definitely noticed my body wants different exercise too. I was a runner in high school. Honestly, running was never easy on my body, but especially it's not easy on my body now. I'll go a few times in the spring just because of the weather. It's nice. But um, yeah, I walk and, you know, we had Yoni Witten on last week and, you know, just I think being in that upright posture is building your postural muscles. And, you know, there's a lot of good things, like you said, lower stress too. Uh, I walk, I have dogs like you. Do your dogs still alive? Yeah. yeah. Still alive. Yeah. <laughs> you have an older dog. My, my walk around the block is, yeah. Very oh, okay. slow. Very slow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm still I'm very look very fit right now. People are always like, what do you do? And I'm like, not much. I go to the gym like twice a week. And now I'm really learning to not do much weight when I'm there. Because if I do a lot of weight, I'll it takes me, you know, I'll be sore for a few days. And I'm like, do I really need to do it? Like, like how little weight almost can I do that's like and so I'm just playing around with that. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I love to do just sports, like I golf and I play pickleball and, you know, I ride my bike in the neighborhood. So, uh, yeah, I agree. Like, it doesn't sound impressive, but it, it actually works to not add another stress to your body. So, yeah. and then, on, and then, as you know, it's like not only about exercise, right? It's, are you getting a good night's sleep, controlling stress in other ways, eating right? Yeah. So it all plays together. Yeah. And I think that's a great feedback for whether you're in your sweet spot for exercise is what is happening to your sleep when you introduce exercise or change your exercise is it helping you get higher quality sleep and for some quantity if you need to improve that but if it's not or if it's causing disruptions in your sleep I mean that's definitely feedback to listen to yeah yeah I totally agree so we've kind of talked on a lot of points, but you had some great specific talking points you sent us. I want to make sure we didn't miss anything. So you wanted to talk about how to support detox and midlife weight loss. So what are some, and any additional ideas you have that we haven't talked about? I think we hit kind of on the whole idea of really the sweet spot. So finding okay. yours and, and not comparing it to you know, anyone else is. So you can probably say this better than I, but everybody's probably toxic exposure or mold exposure, their experience is slightly different as yeah. is as is anybody's experience through perimenopause or, or menopause. It's different than anyone else's. So you really can't compare you to anybody else, but you also can't compare you to you yesterday, right? So you've got to just kind of taken the data of how are you feeling, what's your energy level, what's the clarity of thinking, you know, and change one variable at a time is probably the best way to go. So a lot of times somebody will think, so I should be doing strength training, so I should be doing intervals. And, you know, if you haven't been doing either one of those, let's just start one at a time and add that and we can increase it later, but start it, you know, at a very moderate weight. And I always think it's better to finish a workout thinking I could have done more. There's nothing mm, wrong with true. stopping at that point and let your body give you feedback for the next 24, 48, even 72 hours before you decide to go on and do more. It's that's a good place to be. Yeah. I'm playing with that at the gym too. Cause I get, I wasn't in a, I joined a gym for years. And so now I'm back. It's so fun. So I'll just go and go and go, but <laughs> Now I try to say, okay, let's go for half an hour. Like, you know, that's what you get. Cause if I stay for 70 minutes, it's probably going to be too much the next day. <laughs> Lo and behold. Yeah. And I know, you know, I've talked about like, I think time of day to work out. So are you thinking about mental clarity? You think of probably different times. Mm. I, 
I when I used to do Pilates, I would go at lunch often because afternoon is my lowest, tiredest time. But mm -hmm. um, exercising midday would totally change my afternoon. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the mantra that I like to say is one of the tenets of Flipping 50 is intense early if you're doing intense exercise and light oh, really? weight. You know, okay. the, the alliteration is just easy to remember, but you can do light exercise any time of day, really. That's not gonna disturb your cortisol negatively at all. But if you do intense exercise late in the day, it can disturb your cortisol because cortisol is what we use for the energy for exercise. So if you're working with your cortisol levels, ideally you're gonna, you're gonna do that harder, high intensity kinds of thing early and it will elevate it higher than it typically is in the morning, but you get the corresponding drop when you want it later in the day so that you can go to sleep. But if you try to do high intensity late, like for those of you who might, I'm working and then I come home and I have to do my workout late because I start too early in the morning, you end up beg borrowing and stealing from a hormone called pregnenolone. And pregnenolone is supposed to be there to help you chill out and relax. So you might finish that workout just fine and say, no problem. I had no problem with that. What are you talking about? Right? But then when you go to sleep and rest and relax, you you may struggle with that because you wrote checks on that account. Mm, you borrowed it over right. there. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I sometimes am tempted to get in, a, like, I can get to the gym and now it's 8 p.m. And I'm like, hmm. If you go now, you're going to get wound up, you know, so yes. I usually won't do it. Um, yeah, so I'll share a bit about my working out when I was ha having mold. And then if anybody has questions in the comments about your own situation and, and what your, you know, what your questions are, whether it's weight loss or just finding the right exercise and it's not working, feel free to type it in. Um, so when I had mold, I would still walk my dog every day. I was a good dog walker. Um, but I could barely work out. And sometimes I would go literally, there was this little tiny gym that I had access to, but I had a sauna. And sometimes I would go, I had to turn the sauna on to warm it up. It was one of those. And uh, I'd be like, I'll work out while it warms up. And I, all I could do was like lay on the bench and wait for it to warm up. Like that's how bad I was. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, and then we started working with a practitioner who was really like, yeah, you got to exercise. Like, you got to do it because um, it's good for your mitochondrial repair and getting mm -hmm. oxygen to the tissue. So it was interesting to have that, that feedback and that push because mm -hmm. I, you know, if I was just listening to my body, it would just be like, let's sleep all the time. Let's rest all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so then I got, I was living temporarily somewhere where I did Pilates reformer machine. And that was fantastic for me. Like it's very low impact, but very effective. Uh, it didn't injure me at all. Uh, I was living away from the, I'm sorry, I was, I was in Phoenix temporarily and felt great. And then I went back to Portland, which wasn't the greatest and uh, was living next door to a gym. And then I would do like circuit. Like I just, you know, was, you don't have to think a lot, but I do the weight circuits. Um, and I really started building from that. And, you know, even I go over tired and I'd be like, okay, just do a little bit but it would, it grew. So I think she was absolutely right. You know, just start where you are, like, don't overdo it, like you said, but mm -hmm. do something because it's, there's so many benefits, as you know, from exercise, including when you're sick from mold. So um, just, yeah, finding what does work for you. And then I think it naturally kind of builds. It seems to. Yeah. So. Yeah. So great. It's funny that you saying that reminds me of, I just sent my mom flowers and on the card, she's 94 and she fell about three weeks ago and broke her hip. So of course she had a partial hip replacement. So we're trying to get her, so she becomes a little bit more independent again. So you know, you know imagine the desire to do physical therapy when you're 94. I don't know about you, but I'm guessing yeah. it's not gonna be right. But you know, so the note on the card was like, you know, all you have to do is a little bit more than you did yesterday. 
right? Right, right. It. We make yeah. it a big deal. I, I'm staying with a friend in Utah who just got assigned some PT and we've been doing it together. She's like, we're done already. I'm like, let's just start with a little bit. You know, doing 10 minutes a day is a lot more realistic than doing an hour when you're just getting back into working out. So yeah, it's similar to piano and lots of things. It's like, just sit down and do a bit. Just take that first step. Um, yeah, and then check it off your list, you know, and yeah. do it again tomorrow. Um, yeah, we, Deborah lives in Scottsdale now. She was in, in Denver, but there is some mold in Arizona. Uh, you know, it's not always about uh, relative outdoor humidity. There's other factors. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Deborah mm -hmm. and I both moved to Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> thanks to, <laughs> thanks to mold. We're here. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I think there can probably be mold anywhere, really. Yeah. 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 It's crazy the different stories I hear. Um, I wonder if I can share your website, Deborah, because if people, if people are struggling out there to get ideas to work out, I know that there's lots of people like that, you know, especially me um, of a couple of friends of mine. If you weren't really raised doing exercise, you can be pretty intimidated with, um, well, what do I do? Like, what's right? Like, how do I, you know, what do I do at the gym? And Deborah's got a lot of ideas and resources. So I'll share a screen on your program or your website, Deborah, if you want to just tell us more about it and what, um, what you guys offer. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think we're pointing everybody to the TEDx talk. And that is such a great example of two clients that I, whose story is in addition to my own, that I drew out who ironically, they're both in the um, healthcare services um, industry, but they, you know, both were either over exercising and not realizing it or over exercising and realizing that that must be the solution to burn all those calories and create that caloric deficit, you know, because of a sluggish metabolism, but realizing that really that was truly um, slowing their metabolism down because of that huge, you know, under eating over exercise when you have such a large gap like that, it's more stress on your system. And um, so the irony is actually that's Jennifer right there in the picture behind me on the slide. Right here. Okay. Yeah. And she, you know, has made tremendous progress. She's in her 60s. I think she's 60. She may be 68 as of a few weeks ago. But she lost 100 pounds. She crossed that threshold during the pandemic. She didn't lose it all during the pandemic. She really got to that point at the pandemic. And, you know, it's taken a couple of years to get through. She had to eat twice as much as she was eating and exercise um, half as much in order to make that happen. Because otherwise there's, there was so much stress on her body. Yeah. Wow, that's so well said. That sometimes you have to eat twice as much, exercise right. that as much. Wow, yeah. so interesting. So that link is here on your site, and up to, and then here's a five day free kickstart, and then your program is up here on top. Tell us about the program. Yeah. So if you're looking for strength training, actually, right now is a great time. So it's tone and define is that the program that we're offering right now. It's twelve weeks, and it's just twice a week. So. You know, I'm a big proponent of if you're going to do the strength training, you actually, the, the next thing you have to plan is the recovery. So it's recovering between your exercise that actually helps your fitness. So mm. you really need that, you know, rest between not meaning that you're not active doing the gardening or going for walking and, and otherwise moving and being an active person, really smart, but you've got to take some rest in between. So we do two, and that's also very realistic for a lot of us, whereas doing more is not necessarily so easy to commit to. So I do two strength training sessions a week. They're about 30 minutes, 35 minutes on average, and it's total body and you're done. So um, they're a little higher repetition range, meaning you can use slightly lighter weights. So we reach about 20 and, you know, for those of you who are less familiar with strength training, 10 or fewer is really heavy. So you're going to pick up a heavy weight to do that, which can be really taxing on your system and on your joints and ligaments if you're not used to it. But actually the opposite is also true. We can 
wear and tear the joints by doing really lightweight or a lot more repetitions. So you want that sweet mm. spot. Oh, yeah, awesome. where there's That's really fun. So just yeah. two workouts a week for 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. So you're learning how to do things at home on your own, lifting weights, little hand weights and that kind of a thing. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Little, not so little, but whatever <laughs> it takes for you to reach muscular fatigue, you know, at the end okay. of each set. So you do want to reach that point where you've overloaded the muscle. Not this that's not the same as being tired by the end of a session. And that's where we sometimes get confused. You know, I think we've been all conditioned to, you know, at one point it was, you know, I had to be tired or wiped out, you know, dragging myself out of a class to call it, a, that was a good workout, right? And the whole idea really is within your workout, reach muscular fatigue, but then be able to put those weights down, rest a minute or so and feel like, okay, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm not extremely sore. I may know tomorrow I use the muscles I haven't for a while, but it's not incapacitating. You're actually, you have more energy and you feel better because you've done it than had you not. Perfect. And you've got, let's see, um, you know, is your podcast link on here? Is that it's probably not the TV? So under resources. Okay. Yep. Resources, you're like, use the button, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. She's got a great podcast as well. So you can link to that on here. But yeah, yeah, I think, you know, I'm not the exercise expert, but I invited you and Emily both on and just had Yoni on because I think it's such an important part of whole wellness. And we do kind of run out of ideas or, we, you know, we feel stuck or like, yeah, we're aging or we're going through the change in our health. And just giving that extra attention to movement and, you know, how... Now, how do I kind of uh, cater my needs now to where my body's at? And you may not on your own really be able to totally put that together. Um, but this, this plan can definitely help. Deborah's great testament to it and how gorgeous she is. <laughs> and uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I don't see any last You're questions. welcome. Yeah, so lovely. I may ask you too, I might use some of this for our mold master class coming up next year because we did end up talking quite a bit about mold and your story and how to exercise and all that. Yes. Through all yeah. that. Are you feeling well now? How are you doing? I am. I'm feeling good. Yeah. Good. good. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for everyone who's here live. It was a lot of fun. And Deborah will send you the recording. And uh, I'm going to text you about hanging out when we get off of here, too. All right. We need to hit some golf balls. Yeah. I know. You've been talking to me. I was sort of taking a yeah. break um, for a few reasons, but I'm starting to get the itch again to go back to it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You were slicing too much, or what was the problem? Well, you can you can overdo golf too, for sure. <laughs> so I was like hitting the driving range and hitting the ball in much too athletic of a way. It's a swing; it's not a hit, um, and it's so unilateral, you know. So I already have some postural back so. issues. So yeah, I mean, you can definitely you know get tight in your back. So mm -hmm. I was going through a little phase of thinking, you know, should I switch hands? Like, so I just was like, you know what, let's just take a break and. Got um, it. I'm listening to Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So you're out of practice. It, we should probably play because I could beat you. <laughs> ah! Wow, thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for going on. I think we may have Emily Kyber next week. So we'll keep talking about it. Great. Yeah, we're on a little theme. Fantastic. Yeah, All right. Great to see you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.